Hey guys, I'm going to do a quick video of settings that I use um, for street photography. I guess you can sit, you can call this a video tutorial. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, you know, Thomas, what settings do you use for street photography on Instagram? Blah, blah, Thomas, 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 what settings do you use? You know? Um, so I guess that will answer most of you guys' questions if you guys aren't familiar with settings for street photography. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I typically shoot in aperture priority. I'm sure you guys can see it. It's on, for Nikons, it's um, A, so it stands for aperture priority, like I said. Um, so I can I can control the aperture. Um, you know, typically I shoot in f8. Obviously, the settings will be different. The shutter speed will be different outside, and depending on lighting, um, it gives me both a fast enough shutter speed and a very nice um, sharp image. You know, you get to see the background, middle ground, foreground, etc. You know, uh, you typically don't want to shoot in lower apertures like 1.8, 1.4, 2.8, because not only it'll be overexposed because of the brighter lights outside, um, but just you don't get to see the environment. Um, it's gonna be very blurry if you put in a lower aperture. You know, I typically use lower apertures for portraits and weddings and stuff like that. But um, you know, so I, I like since there'll be a lot of things moving out. You know, people will be moving in and out of frame, and a, a higher aperture like f eight, f eleven, f sixteen. It'll give you a nice sharp image, like I said earlier, and more things will be in focus. Um, but yeah, it won't have any bokeh, so you know that's up to you guys. But you know, but you know, f8, like I said, I typically shoot in f11 sometimes if it's really, really bright. Like I don't know, it's like blinding your eyes. I typically shoot in f16, but it's really rare. I usually shoot f8 because I don't need a decent shutter speed. Um, typically, people shoot at least 250. I tell people to shoot to achieve uh, shutter speed at least 220, 400 because that's typically on a decent lighting, typical day. I'm not sure if that made sense, but you know, let's say with good decent lighting, you probably shoot over 320, 400 a second. Um, you know, for as for ISO, um, I shoot ISO 400. Um, I start from there and obviously lighting will be different you know people keep asking me like oh what I still think you it's very subjective because I am not there with you because I don't have any friends but uh you know I obviously don't know what lighting is over there wherever you're shooting so it obviously be subjective but like I said I usually shoot start off as 400 and if I don't get a shutter speed at least 250th um you know at least 400th at least I bump up the ISO um, one stop, like one or two stops, depending on it, on in the lighting. But typically on daylight, I shoot from anywhere from 400 to 800 ISO. You know, or most cameras can have a good, decent picture. You know, without too much noise. Um, if there isn't too much light, if I, if for some reason on midday there's not that much light, for whatever reason, um, I'll probably shoot. 1600 that's pushing it for me um, even though most cameras are really good at 1600 um, I don't know why but there are some cases where there's some like days where like you know you don't get good amounts of, like show speed um, even at f8 uh, like in the city sometimes I shoot in the city uh, there'll be like obviously buildings with blocking light and I won't get good pictures blurry pictures so I typically shoot at 800 and up that's really rare though, so like I said, forms it's really good for me for the most part on a good midday, you know, session I guess. But I don't like auto ISO because I something about it just weird to me. I guess I like the having control of the ISO and also because sometimes it'll be like a picture that's grainy and another picture that's super clean. You know, I like to have that control over ISO. Um, I know a lot of people who shoot auto ISO, I, it's not my thing. I typically tell people to just shoot at 400 and start off there. But, yeah, um, obviously it'll be depending on the lens, you know. Uh, I, I don't know why, but sometimes certain lenses for me give them more light. I don't know. I might be wrong on that. Um, it might be just me. 
Um, but uh, how I feel about P mode, like I, it's up to you. I I don't I barely shoot P mode. It's like ninety nine percent of the time in manual or aperture priority. I know people shoot manual, but you know it's I'm too stupid to you know go like ninja in the streets. But that's why I shoot aperture priority. But I know I think Martin Parr shoots shoots um, P mode, and he's an amazing photographer. I think he's part of Magnum, but I know uh, I might be wrong on this. But Stephen McCurry, I think he shoots P mode. I might be wrong. Um, Eric Kim obviously shoots P mode. If you don't follow him, then I don't know what's wrong wrong with you. But <laughs> I'm kidding. But you know, Eric Kim shoots P mode. Um, yeah, that's the main ones I know that shoot P mode. It's up to you guys to shoot P mode. Um, you know, you should. Like learn the basics of man like uh, manual shooting like chart speed aperture per like aperture and ISO that's pretty much basics. Um, other than that, I like shooting aperture aperture priority because you know I like to have control over the ISO and the aperture. And yeah, it's pretty much it. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys like the video. Subscribe for more. I might be actually I keep that secret for now. Um, you know I got a couple announcements coming up. But yeah, see you guys later.